All right, we're going to start with problem one from the chapter eight homework of FEP highway design. Uh, I've got a driver going up a hill, upgrade a uh, 5% at 45 miles per hour. When he sees an animal in the middle of the highway, we want to find the stopping site distance and check it with our table 8-1 for level conditions. And how would the braking distance change on a level surface and why? So we've got a grade here, and we know that stopping site distance is made out of two components. So stopping site distance is going to be equal to that brake reaction time, and that's going to be independent of grade. So it doesn't matter that we're going uphill or level. But there's a second component, and that is the brake distance. And that can be on different types of terrain. So we can have level, we can have uphill, we can have downhill. And that's the component, component that's going to change with this uphill grade. So because of that, for that break reaction time, we can use a formula for that. Um, we know that formula for our uh, handout here. We have two components, the break reaction time and the break distance on our terrain. And this lets us put in a grade, or we could just put zero for level terrain. Uh, we have this 1.467 VT. Uh, the 2018 Ashto Green Book uh, uses 1.47. So we'll go ahead and update to that and use that for this calculation. So we'll use 1.47. VT for this break reaction time and we'll use that default value for time of 2.2 seconds. I'm sorry, 2.5 seconds. Uh, so that becomes, in this case, 45 miles per hour um, and that 1.47 conversion factor times 45 times the 2.5 seconds. And I'm not going to put units in there because that 1.47 is there to help us convert miles per hour and seconds so we get out feet here. So when I do that math, 1.47 times 45 times 2.5, I do get 165.375 feet. And if I go ahead and look in my chart here, so you can look on our handout, which is the 2011 Ashto uh, chart here at 45 miles per hour for my first con component, my break reaction distance, it is 165.4. And you can check that if you have a 2018 manual as well. You can see 45 gets you that 165.4 for the break reaction distance. So can compute that or we can just look it up on the table and round it to the tenths place. So 165.4 feet will work for us for this computation. Uh, now the second part, we have the break reaction distance. So let's put that in purple down here. So that second component, like we saw from our formula, is going to include um, the grade as well. So we'll have v squared uh, over 30, which is another conversion factor. Um, we have it a which is the deceleration rate over 32.2. And in this case, we'll have plus our grade because we're going uphill. So again, our V is 45, and I'm not going to put units in because we've got this 30 conversion factor. Our A is a default deceleration rate, which we're going to use as 11.2. Those units will cancel out with a 32.2, and then we'll add that grade of 5%. Uh, when we do that math all out, to three decimal places again, I get 169.672. And so I'll go ahead and round that also to one decimal place, 169.7 feet for that break distance on the terrain, because in this case we have the uphill, uphill terrain. If we had the level terrain, so if we were in the condition with level terrain, Let's take a look and see what that value would be just to, because we know we're thinking about comparing those as we go on in the future. And that way, we can also go back to our table, either the 2011 or the 2018 manual, looking on the handout. Um, we can see that that break distance on level is 194.4. So that component was 194.4 or 2018 also, same value. 194.4 for that braking distance on level terrain 
at 45 miles per hour. So we'll go ahead and write that down too just so we can keep track of how things compare here. So remember that first component, that's going to be the same whether you're level uphill downhill because it's only including the speed and that uh, reaction time which we use as a default 2.5 seconds. It's the second component, that brake distance on terrain, where we have to take into account that grade. And so that changes things here. We can see that it's a lot smaller with that uphill grade, which makes sense. That uphill grade is helping us with our deceleration. So let's go ahead and compute this stopping site distance now for our 5% uphill. For our 5% grade at V equals 45 miles per hour. We take the uh, 165.4 and add it to the 169.7 feet. And when we add those together, we do get 335.1 foot. And we can compare that to the stopping site distance in our table for our level terrain uh, for V equals 45 miles per hour. And again, I'm going to pick that right off the table. And again, you can use the one you have, which is the 2011, or check the 2018. And so I'm just going to compare calculated to calculated since I didn't round yet. So 359.8, 2011, and also the same 2018, 359.8, just a different font. 359.8 there. Now they go ahead and round that up to 360 for their design. And so we could go ahead probably and round ours up to 340. Uh, but either way you slice it, the uh, stopping site distance on the level terrain is going to be higher than the stopping site distance for the grade. So we've checked those, and now the question is, uh, why? Why is it so different? Um, well, I think we kind of talked about this already, but that, just to write it down here, the braking distance, and remember that's our second component here, braking distance um, is going to be higher for the level terrain. Uh, then the uphill grade, uh, since the uphill grade is going to help increase that deceleration, right? And just let's take a look at how that works again. Remember, we have that denominator component. And if that were at a zero, um, that wouldn't give that little boost there, okay? So that helps increase that deceleration, which increases the denominator, which brings us to a smaller value for our break distance here.